my my Fusion 360 thing okay? Yep. All right. Great. All right. Uh, so in this in this class, did we cover uh, sweeps at all last time? I don't think so. All right. Great. We're going sweeps and uh, planes are going to be our best friends on this in this class. In this uh, class is weird. That makes me see that. In this workshop, there we go. That's that feels a little bit more appropriate. Um, so if you guys create a sketch, uh, where you, Leah, I think was here last time. Ad, Addie and Lena, were you guys here last time? No, I wasn't. Oh, you weren't? Okay. Is this a whole new crew? Yeah, there's some unfamiliar names. Okay. All right. So, uh, all right. That's that's awesome, actually. All right, so I just wanted to make sure, so that way, like you know, if I needed to explain something again or you know, skip above it, but who doesn't like hearing themselves talk, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to start with is a sketch, right? So what I do is I click sketch right here, and what a sketch is is it's a two-dimensional drawing essentially. So how these 3D modeling programs work, specifically like engineering style 3D modeling, like SolidWorks and Fusion, is you usually start off with like a two dimensional drawing of a sketch and you manipulate that sketch in some way to make it three dimensional. And then you continue manipulating, manipulating, manipulating until you have, uh, you have what you want. Uh, so since this is a new crew, I'll uh, go through the sketch really quick. Most of it is self-explanatory. Uh, so up here are like the different uh, things you can sketch out. Uh, if you do the drop down menu, a line, a rectangle, a circle, an arc, a polygon, an ellipse, a uh, slot, spline, these are all usually pretty self-explanatory. Text is words. Um, a point is, is just like a point on the thing to reference. Uh, so these are all pretty self-explanatory. So like, let's say I want to do a line, right? Um, I can just draw a shape of my choosing um, right there. And then a cool thing about Fusion 360 and SolidWorks does the same thing is where it'll help you out. So like if I want to get it perfectly straight, they'll do that. Um, or if I want to meet up at a point, it'll kind of like nudge it in the direction I want to nudge it in. Uh, and then let's also say I drew a circle. Um, and then you can use these constraints up here uh, to help guide everything. So let's say I want the center of the circle to match this point. What I would do is I would, uh, while holding shift, press the two points and click on this. This is coincident. And then same thing in all of these, parallel or equal, parallel, perpendicular. Uh, lock is, or fix is just unmovable, unchangeable. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so, the f so if you see down here, they show you some modifications. So let's do trim. Uh, what trim do does? It's it's, uh, it's a click on SolidWorks. It's a click and drag tool. So like you would press down and drag. On this one, it's just a click. So what it does is it essentially cuts down a line to its two previous points of contact. So like let's say right here. I'll cut it down to here and here. Or if I want to get rid of this line right there, uh, I'll get rid of those lines. Yeah. Okay, that's not a problem. That's not a. It's not a problem. Um, fill it. It curves any uh, any corners you have. Uh, offset uh, creates an offset of it, either inside or outside. This is great if you want to do like borders or boxes, that kind of stuff. Um, and then here, I'm going, another thing to note is this right here, construction. Uh, construction is basically makes it uh, a dotted, whatever sketch you do dotted. And then that essentially is to be used as a reference uh, tool, uh, as a reference tool. Uh, and then some things you can do to, mod to uh, adjust is like a circular pattern right here. So, a circular pattern around center point. Let's say this is a center point. Um, so I selected this line right here, 
And what it did is it repeated a circular pattern of that line. And I can uh, like affect how, uh, how much, how many I want or uh, the angle between them and so on and so forth. Uh, and then mirror, uh, it does basically so. So what mirror does is it mirrors whatever object uh, you do across a mirror line. So I'm going to use this reference as a mirror line. Um, yeah. And so those are some of the some of the basic things in sketch. And then what you can also do is let's say you have a picture of something you want to model, you can insert a picture and trace it out. So we have this, this is going to be our pseudo sketch. Um, and now we want to do something to make it three dimensional. So let's say we wanted to extrude it. Um, this is an extrude option right here. If you click on the drop down menu under create, uh, there's multiple other options. Uh, revolve, it revolves it around a center line. A sweep we'll be using a lot. Loft is when you want to connect two shapes together. Um, and then so on and so forth. And we'll slowly be using all of these as these um, workshops, I guess, progress. Uh, so I'm going to click this outer one and uh, say five inches. And then voila, this extruded upward. And now we have a 3D model. Um, does anyone have any questions of anything so far? Take your silence as a no. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a lot of the loft tool. So let's start from the beginning. So I deleted everything right now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to go back to sketch. So we're going to go create sketch. And um, give me a second. I got to remember. <laughs> I got to remember what what the uh, what the step what the steps were. Okay, okay, I got it. Um, a quick thing, it's, very, it's a really great idea to um, have a very good visual of what you want a 3D model if it's a little bit more complex. So for me, I like to draw it out. It kind of keeps everything on track. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a rectangle. Uh, for now, I want you guys, by the way, are you guys following along on your own computers or are you guys just watching this? I'm following along. Okay. Um, all right, so what we're going to use is we're gonna use this tool right here called Sketch Dimension. Sketch Dimension is beautiful because it's basically like the cops of Fusion 360. Like you, if anything is out of line, this thing puts everything the way you want it. So you made a some type of rectangle, any size, right? So we're going to use Sketch Dimension right here and we're gonna click on the top horizontal line and we're going to change, so it gives you the dimensional value. So we're going to change the dimensional value to, I think, I think three works. Yeah, three is fine. So we're using inches. Yes, we're using uh, inches. Why? All right, is uh, yours on uh, millimeters? All right. So if you go right here, uh, if you go right here, I know it's oh uh, right here, document settings. Okay. And units, and you could change it to inches. Fun fact, I don't know how accurate this is, but I was recently informed that the uh, creation of the inch was based off of three barleys of wheat. So when they say Americans will use anything but the metric system, like three football <laughs> or whatever, that's literally how it started. Uh, were you able to change it to inches? All right. Yes, I got it. All right. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to mention about sketches is that um, when you design a sketch, so I'm gonna real quick. So if I wanna create a sketch, it asks me on what plane I wanna do it. Your plane is like the, you know, your three dimensional planes. Um, it's basically like your sketch paper or your table. You can't really draw in mid, mid air or nothingness. You know, it needs like a reference point, and that's what your planes are. All right, back to back to this. Um, also, a little bit of a breakdown. 
Uh, so down here, this part is going to be your tree. This is also a lifesaver. It's your history tree. So basically everything you do is going to show up here. So right here, this is my sketch. I can right click and click edit sketch and I'm back to where I was. And it's a very, very useful tool uh, that I hope you guys will be utilizing. Uh, so three inches. Okay. Uh, so let's make this one, I don't know, four inches. Yeah, four inches. Yeah, why not? Four inches. Four point five inches. Four point five inches. All right. And then we're gonna hit finish sketch. Uh, so now we've got our rectangle in all its glory. Thank you guys for coming to the 3D modeling workshop. It's been a pleasure. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> We're going to be extruding it. So I hit extrude up here and we're going to be extruding it uh, five inches. Uh, so this is going to be all right. So I so this is going to be our, by the way, if you guys are uh, wondering how I'm rotating this around, there's a cube on the upper right hand corner here. Uh, if you click and drag, you can move it around. Uh, also, if you press down on shift and click down on the roller on the mouse, you can also move it around that way. And uh, yeah, so however you like to move it around to each their own. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I think I got the orientation wrong. I had it on the wrong plane, but it's an easy fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the sketch and we're going to change this to a five. And we're going to change the, we're going to click on edit feature and we're going to change that to a three. So, so that way our cube should look a little bit like this. Has uh, everyone followed follow along? Okay. Yeah, I got it. All right. All right. So, what we're going to be doing now is we're we're going to be using a. Uh, so we're going to be using a loft tool actually. So now we want to set up the loft. So what we're going to do is essentially this is our going to be like the coin sorter and we want to kind of mold out the ramp section of it. Uh, and the ramp is an interesting, uh, is it going to be an interesting um, like shape because I'm trying to think of how to do it. It has to be, it has to be uh, not only angled across down this way so the coins can move down, but it also have to, it has to have like a little, a bit of an angle here as well. Uh, so that way the coins don't just like slide off the sides. It kind of is guided throughout the whole ramp. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, drawing the ends of the ramp. So like one end here and then one end here, but a slightly lower. Uh, and then we're going to draw a line from point to point and we're going to loft it together. Uh, so it's just a little bit of an explanation. I, it's not the best explanation, but you'll see what I mean. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to draw a, uh, a, uh, the ramp or so, um, so there's the long side, go to like one of the ends. So back, I hit back and we're gonna sketch a, uh, we're gonna sketch the ramp section right here, like the two dimensional um, cross sectional area of the ramp. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select this surface as our plane. So we're gonna be able to select, um, we're gonna be able to sketch right on top of here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're gonna do use this line right here and we're gonna make a 
So we're going to draw this general shape. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but as long as it's, it looks kind of like this, we'll be fine. All right, so now we have these two shapes right here. So if you can see, this is like the side view of the ramp. Uh, so the coin will be like lying down on this side and then this will be kind of like a little guide rail type of thing. Um, yeah. So if you... Uh, let me know if you guys are good to go. Uh, any questions, anything at all? All right, I'm going to take your silence as uh, guys, it's confirmation y'all are good. If you guys have any questions at any time, please feel free to ask. All right, so now we are Guys can hear my mom singing in the back. It's no problem. No problem. <laughs> All right, so let me see the options right up here. There should be a copy and or move option somewhere here under modify. Yes, copy and or move. So here we want to copy and move. Uh, so selection, uh, you're going to want to select uh, the outer lines right here. So this shape. Um, and then No, I don't want to pivot point to point. Point to, all right, point to point. Let's do, all right, so select. Um, so if you go under modify, move slash copy, and then select your uh, your lines. Select the, the lines uh, we're going to be moving. Um, we're going to be moving it from selecting point to point so this is the origin point, and then this is the next point. And give me a moment. By the way, welcome. Oh, hey, Sergio. I know Sergio. Uh, welcome, Laura, to the 3D modeling workshop. Hi. Uh, so. When did you guys, uh, did you miss a lot or? I just got here, I was in class. Okay, that's no problem. Uh, so essentially what we're, gonna, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, making a coin sorter. Uh, and what we wanna do is we essentially want to make a ramp. Um, are you following along with us or are you just watching? Uh, I can follow along. Did we just make a cube and then make a sketch on the plane? Yes. Extruded or something. Yes. Uh, however, however, and uh, Leah, Addy, and Lena, please forgive me. Uh, I went a step ahead. So this is exactly why you should always have a picture or a diagram in front of you, uh, like drawn out of what you want to do. So <laughs> luckily we didn't get too far into it, but we're going to go back a little bit. It's okay, I was lost on that part, so it's okay. All right, great. All right, uh, Sergio, you're, you're a pretty smart guy, so I'm, I think you can figure it out. 
I hope that's the same Sergio I know. If not, it's going to be really awkward. Um, but um, Sergio, if you're not the same guy, I'm still sure you're pretty smart. Um, and I hope it's the same Sergio. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch right here. So you're going to, Laura, you're going to click up here and create a sketch. Uh, and what that does is a sketch is essentially a two-dimensional drawing that we're going to adjust and modify to create a 3D model. Uh, and then before selecting, before getting into drawing your sketch, you're going to have like this image right here. Uh, it's essentially asking you where you want to, what plane do you want to draw on? Because like, you know, you can't draw in the air, you have to have a paper. Um, so this is like a reference point, or this is the reference point that they're using um, to, on like what plane the sketch will be on. So I'm going to select a, a side plane right here. And uh, what we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the uh, odd shape that I had earlier. Uh, so something like, something like this. Um, So something like that. Uh, the most important aspects of the drawing is this angle and this part. Uh, feel free to, you know, get creative on the other aspects uh, if you like. Uh, so uh, what we're going to be doing next is here. That was. Let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a curve to this. So I'm going to select the fillet tool up here. Uh, and uh, this fillet tool kind of rounds out the shapes. Um, there should be, okay, yes. So this is, uh, this, this uh, radius is way too big. Uh, so I'm going to make it 0.25. Yeah, that's much better. And then, yeah, escape point twenty five. All right, that's. And then you know what? I'll add one up here too. And uh, okay, the bottoms don't really matter. Uh, so, does everyone understand? Like, is everyone caught up? Is everyone all good? I don't remember where to find the thing to cut the line. Uh, what do you mean, uh, cut the line? And the modify, but I don't, it's a modify. Uh, right here, the scissor, trim. So uh, essentially what, so Laura, essentially what trim does is like, let's say I have this line, but I only want like this part. I can click trim and it'll get rid of, uh, it'll get rid of the line up to its last two points of contact. So for example, this bit it starts here and ends at the beginning of the fillet. So we'll get rid of that bit right there. But I need that, so let me control Z. Does that help? Uh, was it Leah, the one that was? Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, is everyone good? All right, Laura's good. Leah, are you good? Uh, yes. All right, Addy, Nina, uh, are y'all good? good? Sergio? Seems everyone's ready to go. All right, great. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, so now what I want to do is we're going to set the length. So this is the side view of our ramp, right? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to set the length and, and uh, the angle essentially right now with uh, a line, like the horizontal line uh, of, of the ramp. So, uh, but first we want to set a plane right here, right here or right here on this point. We want the plane to be coincident with either the front face or the back face. We essentially want the flat, uh, flat face to draw our, hor our horizontal line. Um, let me show you what, we'll, what, I'm, what I'm saying, and then if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, so um, sorry, when you 
pick the plane? Is it similar, like how you pick the plane in a dinner? Um, I, I just realized I picked the wrong plane. Like, is there a way for me to change it? Uh, so, all right. So, I'm not sure about Inventor. I, I haven't used Inventor, but assuming that it's uh, this, an Autodesk company, uh, I think it might be pretty similar. Um, so the plane is... Yeah, Inventor is pretty similar. Yeah. Like I've been using Inventor for three years and I was like really scared about using this one, but it's basically the same. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so Autodesk does a good job about having a solid alignment among their apps. So, um, and then uh, Leah, so it doesn't necessarily matter if you picked the right plane or not. It's just like how you, it's a little bit arbitrary. So as long as like you can keep track of the model, um, the plane itself has no, no real bearing on, on the model itself. Okay. All right. So if you follow the same steps we do, uh, yours will come out just the same. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set our own personal plane. So right here, I'm going to go to construct and select offset plane. Excuse me. And then, um, so in this case, uh, my design is, is uh, connected to the origin. Um, so so uh, if I select this plane and I want to move it to this point, so nothing necessarily happens here. Uh, actually, actually, an even better example. So I select this plane, the, the same plane that's kind of like aligned with this line right here. And then on object, I selected this back point right here. So what I essentially did was I created a plane that was parallel to this one, but at a different position in space. Uh, and that's a very useful tool when modeling and determining where you want your sketches to be. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. So, so my plane is back here right now. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to draw the angle and length of the ramp. So I want to draw a sketch on here. By the way, do you guys have any questions about what I did? Or you all good? Uh, are you talking to me, Laura, or? No, okay, okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a sketch here. So draw a sketch and we want to, oof, that's not good. Um, if you guys go to construction and make your plane one visible, you want to make your plane one visible by clicking this eye right here before we do the sketch. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create the sketch here and we're going to select plane one. Uh, and then from plane one, we're going to start, we're going to take our line at the origin, we're gonna start at the origin right here and have it be seven inches long and uh, one inch down. So the, the actual value doesn't necessarily matter as long as you get, uh, as long as it's going downward essentially. So this is what we end up getting make my so if okay. this helps can you repeat that again sorry no problem uh where where did i lose you so i have the plane the first one that we did in, like in the back of the okay the sketch so is it visible or invisible visible visible all right so what you want to do is you want to hit did you start a sketch or have you not started a sketch yet yes i i had but i can go back all right, no, 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 you're good. So what you want it to do is you want to draw a line starting from the origin okay. uh, and, uh, and essentially just, you don't want it to be completely flat or horizontal. You want it to be angled downward a little bit. Um, if that, does that help? Here. I'm just, this? I'm not, just not sure which plane I should choose when I go to sketch. Um, when you go to sketch, choose the plane that you just created, the one in the back. Okay.
And then if this helps, I added dimensions. It's uh, 8.6 inches long and there's a decrease of, I'm gonna make it a little bit more extreme, 0 0.75 inches. All right, and then we want like the hypotenuse of those two lines. Oops, I did it in the wrong plane, I'm sorry. No, no, you're, you're all fine. Uh, let me know when you uh, when when you if you have any questions or when you when you catch up a little. Uh, I think you're going. I don't want to like make right. it wait for me. All right. Um, if anything, uh, I can come back and help you out. Help you out at the end. Okay. All right. So now we're going to finish our sketch. All right. And we are going to want to move, we're going to want to copy this sketch to over, over here at this point. So what we're going to do Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to select the sketch uh, right here, just select the sketch and select move slash copy. Um, and then sketch objects. And then just make sure all your lines are selected right here. Right there, so all my lines are selected. Uh, and then I'm gonna move from, from this, from point to point. So the origin point, so we're gonna pick this back point right here. Uh, so once you have everything selected on move type, we want it point to point. And then on origin point, it's gonna be this back point right here, this corner point. Uh, and then uh, target point is going to be this bottom point right here. Okay. That's weird. Why didn't you work? Give me one. Yeah. All right. Um, All right, uh, so what we're going to do is that's, I'm sorry uh, for the technical uh, for difficulties on my end. So what we're going to do is uh, on our triangle here, we're going to get rid of the, the vertical and horizontal lines right here. Uh, and then instead of moving it, we're going to use a sweep function right here. So the sweep function essentially takes your sketch and drags it along a line. So the profile, we're gonna select our sketch and for path, we're gonna select this line right here. And then that creates our ramp. All right, so that's our top, the top of our coin base. Uh, is everyone good so far? Yes. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Um, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating the thing that where the coins collect essentially. Uh, this is, this is a very easy part. Uh, it's just a bunch of rectangles. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch and sketch on top of this surface right here. And we can just make a two point rectangle right here from here to here. Um, and then this is where our items will like fall into. Uh, so we will want to extrude this. We want to extrude this. Uh, I let's see if it's gonna to objects. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I extended this to an object um, and I selected the opposite surface. And what that does essentially is it just extrudes it up until it hits the selected surface. Uh, yeah. And then I don't want to cut, I want to join. And then we hit OK. And now we have our our uh, collection area. Uh, and then we're also going to add a basin right here to collect as well. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add another rectangle. Uh, this one doesn't have to uh, yeah, this one doesn't have to start all the way here and it's going to be a little bit lower since it's uh, more of the or like a little bowl for the coins to fall into. And we're going to want to extrude this. And then again, uh, instead of distance, we're going to do to object. And I'm going to select this surface for my object and hit OK. All right, so right now we have this uh, solid block of a model. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding two holes here and a channel uh, for them to fall into. Um, does anyone have any questions or are, are you guys? Right. All right, so next what we're going to end up doing is we're going to draw a sketch right here. Uh, create a sketch and we're just going to be drawing two circles. So for this coin holder, it's going to be two coins. So this currency, uh, yeah, two. Yeah, two. So this currency is, uh, is very weak. It's a very weak current. Well, not, not maybe not very weak. So this country, they only have two prices on all their on all their stuff. It's going to be ten cents or fifty cents. There's no other. So that's why they don't need that varied of a uh, coin holder. So it, they'll be fine. Welcome to Forex, everyone. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to make another one of of these. Um, it's a little bit past there. All right. So uh, I'm placing it a little bit past here because it's kind of kind of going to flow into it. You'll you'll see in a moment. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mirror tool to make a second one. So I'm going to select line and construction, and from one end to the other, draw a straight line, and then. Let's, uh, Should find the midpoint there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my circle and mirror. No, that's the wrong button. Mirror, mirror my circle across this line right here. Okay. And then we're going to create our hole. We're going to extrude it down, I pressed E for extrude. And so we want distance, we want a cut, select the circles here, just downward just a tad. And then I'm just gonna fill it the inside right here. 0 0.5. Yeah, 0 0.5 is perfect. So now we have our little basins here where our coins are going to fall into. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Concerns? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the track right here. Um, we want to, first things first is we want to make sure that our line is, uh, the track matches up with the basin. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a plane. So what we're going to be doing is, give me a moment, let me think about this. Again, I designed one of these last night, but it's always good to have a drawing of, of what you want to do uh, with you, so that way it's a little bit easier uh, to visualize the steps. Okay, yeah, so what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be making the sketch for this visible and we're gonna do another sweep. So uh, what we do is we go sketch, sketch 10. Uh, so uh, we are going to be making another plane. So we're gonna go construct offset plane, uh, make the plane parallel to this base, this face right here. And we're gonna offset it to the center point of this, uh, of, uh, of this um, basin. go and we're going to hit okay so now uh we want to make sure that all right so the plane is visible we're going to hit sketch and we're going to select this plane to do our sketch so right now we're going to sketch the path for which the hole is going to be uh taking so um it's going to be going straight down right here with a little bit of a curve at the end. So this is the spline tool was what I was using. Uh, spline tool helps you create the uh, more curved There we go. Okay. Uh, so this is the track that our uh, our our hole essentially is going to be taking. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to hit finish sketch. Uh, we're going to draw a sketch right on this face right here. So we hit sketch, uh, and then we'll draw the diameter. So I want to do a two point circle. So two points here, it goes outward like that. So now the circle kind of matches up with this base right here. So as the coin rolls down, once it hits a circle that a hole that it fits into, it'll just fall. And then I am going to coincident these two points. Okay, uh, so before we can coincident, I overlooked something. Uh, we're going to finish the sketch here and we're gonna edit our previous sketch. So this is what I mean by your history tree is going to be amazing. Um, we're going to, so this point needs to be coincident with this line because that's going to be the plane we're gonna be working on. So we're going to want to extend this point to this line or just select the point selecting line, sit it in there, voila, they're touching. And then now we hit finish sketch, we go back to our first one, we edit a circle, and then now these two points will be able to coincide. All right, so we hit, 
So now that we have our circle for the hole, the hole for our coin, uh, we're going to go, we're going to create a sweep. Finish sketch. Uh, we're going to create a sweep. I'm going to select the circle as our profile, and we're going to select this line as our path. And it has the cut path right there. Uh, what does a sweep do? What's okay. the function of it? So a sweep essentially takes your, uh, your, by the way, that's a great question. And thanks for asking. I was getting a little bit nervous, like it felt talking to myself, but um, all right. So what a sweep does is it takes your shape or your sketch and it, um, it drags it across a path. So this line, this guiding line that we did here is going to be the, uh, the path that it drags along the shape. So at every point, essentially, it kind of like extrudes it along that path. Uh, and in this case, it's okay. creating an extruded cut. Okay, think, thank you. No problem. I think we have to fix the spine a bit so it can fully go into the, the slot, right? Yeah, so the issue here is that um, you see how this angle right here, the angle of our surface of our sketch is, uh, well, it's <laughs> for lack of a better word, it's at an angle. Um, so when it ends here, it also ends at an angle. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to adjust the original pathway. So if we hit OK, right, and then, all right, so now we have this right here where it's not there's this small section that isn't completely cut. So what we can do is we have to go back to our sketch right here and we hit edit sketch and we extend this line a little bit, just a tad, just a tad. Let's make it a little bit more, there we go. And I hit finish sketch and we're gonna see that it now cuts all the way through. So, um, does that answer your question, Laurel? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right, awesome. Uh, does everyone understand what we're doing? Any, any more? Oh, chat. Oh no, the chat was. Uh, I have to go. Think. Oh, okay. Well, they're not here, but I hope they had, they learned. Um, okay, uh, so the next step is, so you do the same thing on this side right here, um, where, I think it's a two point circle, right? Yeah, yeah, but first we need a pathway. We need to create the pathway for it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a plane. So construct, uh, select the side of the plane and then offset it to this point right here, the center point of this hole, because we want everything to line up. Um, Could you also do a mirror? So technically, yes, but no, because Coins are different shapes. So if you mirror it, it's gonna mirror the same exact dimensions. And the thing with mirror is um, it's not like a copy and paste in like a Microsoft Word document where you can copy and paste and change what you pasted. It's a copy and paste where it's a constant paste of the original copy. So if you make an adjustment to the original, you end up adjusting the paste. But if you end up trying to adjust like the mirrored feature, um, it can get, it's doable-ish, but it gets really funky. Um, and we don't want to hit any errors or anything. We want to keep everything nice and clean and organized sure. and avoid those errors like we avoid coronavirus. Um, 
So what we do is uh, we can do the same thing uh, here where we have the plane and then we're going to draw the pathway along this plane. Uh, something oh. you can do. Oh, sorry. Uh, how did you, um, how did you get that plane to show? Did you just like, Oh, uh, yeah. So I when like I made my sketch, continue, so I made, I made my sketch here visible sketch 13, which is the sketch I made for these circles. Um, yeah. And for these circles, I have like these bisecting points right here in the center of the circle. Uh, so what I did was an offset plane. Uh, instead of distance, I go to object. And then uh, first you hit a reference. You, so you either hit a, so you either hit like a reference plane or a reference surface, and then you hit the object to which you want to adjust it to. Uh, so the reference surface, it's going to always be parallel to that surface, essentially. So like the blue part and then the object would be like the center of your whole thing? Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. And then this is a uh, super, super handy for a whole variety of reasons. It's a pretty great feature. Rate it 10 out of 10. Um, so now that we have this, um, actually, I just realized, Ali, something we could have done is mirror the sketch of mirror the sketch of the of the of the pathway. Yeah, the spline, right? Yeah, yeah. So, would it confuse you guys if we tried tried something else? If we backtrack one step? Mm -hmm. No, uh, Leah, Sergio, you guys have been pretty quiet, but. You guys don't say oh, I just go ahead. got okay. lost like a while ago so i think i'm gonna do it I'm, gonna, I'm observing right now but then i'll do it with a youtube video okay and um i'm in the group chat feel free to text me um uh if you need if you need any any pointers or anything thank you um yeah so uh yeah so, let's try it out okay so what we're going to do is uh okay so here's the interesting thing. Okay, so we want to mirror one of our old sketches. Um, we can't, it doesn't really work so well when you want to mirror a sketch across. Uh, so you're, if your reference line is like another sketch, it doesn't work out too well. So what I'm going to do as my reference point, I'm going to use this plane. So, but in order to use this plane, I need it to be able to be in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my feature down here. I'm going to hit edit feature and I'm going to move it back. Uh, I'm going to move it back to the center line right here, the center point right here. So now it's right in the middle and we hit OK. Um, and then and then now what we do is we select our sketch which I need to figure out which sketch it is. Yep, that one. So if you like drag your arrow thing, it kind of like makes the sketch it is visible. So it's pretty helpful. So we're going to take sketch 11. Yeah, sketch 11. And we're going to Is it under modify? Scale and combine offset split. Mirror, here, here it is. It was hiding in plain sight. Um, so what we do here is we select so we have our sketch selected i hope no we don't let's see let's see let's make it. oh that sucks uh something that you can do in solidworks that doesn't work here is select from the tree but it seems to be only letting us select from the model itself and it only lets us oh wait features faces no
Yeah, we're not going to be able to. We can copy and paste it, but that hasn't worked out in the. All right, I'm going to try this real quick, real quick. Real quick, and if it works, I'll explain it. If it doesn't, origin point. Uh, no, say origin point is it's right here. Target point is right here. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. I don't want to waste your time. I'll uh, let's just draw another one. Uh, so I I promise. I prom if you guys want, come back another workshop, not the next one, but one of these workshops. I'll come back with a better uh, coin sorter. Um, yeah. So. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna click edit. We're gonna click, give me a second, the video is on top. We're gonna create edit feature. And then on object, we're gonna make it back right here. We're gonna hit okay. And what we're going to do is we're gonna create our line. So we're gonna hit sketch. We're gonna select our plane. Uh, and we're going to do our our pathway right here. I'm going to select the spline tool. Let's go a little bit outward. So one thing that I uh, am at fault for is thinking that Fusion and SolidWorks are basically the same thing. They're, they're, there's like a few small things that are very different that, that, is, uh, that, that, is, uh, that throws me off a good bit. So I apologize for overestimating my abilities. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so like for example, in SolidWorks, um, so like you see how this line follows you around or the spline? So if you hit escape in SolidWorks, whatever points you set down stays. But every time I hit escape here, whatever points I set, set down just all get deleted. Um, okay, so we have our pathway. So now we're gonna finish our sketch and then we're going to select uh, this plane, right? This surface. So create a sketch. Uh, we're gonna do. Hold up. No, yeah, we, we did it. Right. Uh, we're gonna create a two-point circle. Uh, circle, two points. So I'm gonna make the bottom point. Aligned with this top point aligned with that piece right there. Actually, let's make the circle huge. Let's uh, here. All right, sketch, two point circle. Start from down here and we'll make it real big. No, not that big, can't be that big. There we go. That's close enough. All right, so now we've got our circle. We've got our line. So the, th the thing about our line, our circle is let's have, I'll explain this in a minute, but let's have a, uh, a, con a construction line bisecting our circle. So we're gonna do a line construction 
Uh, gonna get them. Okay. Uh, create. I'm gonna add in. All right, so here's the thing about the, what was it? The sweep. The sweep, the line has to, the pathway has to be in contact somehow with the circle. Will this work? No, it doesn't work because it's not touching it. So it has to touch either the center or the perimeter of the circle. So what we're going to do to resolve this issue is again, we're gonna go back on the sketch for that sweep. I'm gonna edit the sketch. Uh, we're gonna make sure that this point is coincident with this line right there. So now. I'm gonna finish that sketch. That's what I forgot to do. And then we're gonna make our center coincident with sketch to enter the sketch. Uh, we're gonna make, sorry, give me a moment. The zoom, all the zoom things are kind of popping up. Uh, we're gonna make our center of the circle coincident with the point that we made. Ah, I see what we did. We're not continuing the same sketch. All right, here. Edit sketch. So now, I accidentally made a new sketch. So what we're doing is hold shift, hold the circle, incident, and now it's centered. And we're going to double click here. Sketch dimension, and we're gonna make it a little smaller. We're gonna make it 3.3.3. 3. Uh, 3. There we go. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Uh, let's make it three, there we go. And then now we finish sketch and then we sweep. You know, sweep isn't only for cleaning, it's for modeling too. So why did you put the construction line in there again? Um, I was trying to get the, so what I was attempting to do was, I was hoping that with the construction line, I can set a, I could try to set a point at the top of the circle. Um, so the construction line would help me find the center of the circle. And then at the center, I'd place the point and I was gonna try to make the point at the top coincident with the point on the path. So that way it's not, it's not lifted up like how it is right now. Uh, but what happened is that the, it, didn't, it didn't work the way I thought it would. The mechanics are a little bit different. Um, so I ended up just like, ignoring the construction line. It was an attempt to fix an issue, but it didn't fully fix the issue. I think we can do is fix the spline, and upon fixing the spline, uh, it would make the, the perimeter of the circle, just the outer edge touch at the bottom. Or could you have um, drawn a circle at like a center point, and like, um, instead of doing like a two line? Do a... Um, what, what I would have done is I would have, calculated the radius of my circle. So, okay. So what, this is what I would have done. This is back all the way back to the spline thing. So I 
click here at the sketch. So what I would have done is I would have calculated the radius of my circle. So does anyone remember the radius of the circle? It was three, right? Or the diameter was three, right? That's yeah. correct. So it was, it was three inches. It was three inches. So the radius is 1.5. So what I would do is I want the bottom of my circle to start here. So what I do is I'd create a construction line, right? Line, construction, and I'd follow this line right here. And I'd set it to be 3.5. This line right here. I'll have it to be 3.5, 1.5, 1 1.5. But the other way, 1.5 the other way. I drew you facing the other way. Why did you flip? OK. Um, All right, let's say negative 1.5. Does that do what I wanted to do? Okay, I'm gonna put you guys right there, front. All right, so. We are back here. We go edit sketch. And then. All right, I want to delete that line. Delete, there we go. You know, some of your sketches come out as disappointments. You can't be proud of all of them. Uh, 1.5. 1.5. So now we have a point right here. So now what I would do is I would make this point and this point coincident. It's my mistake. All right, so what happened was we already put a rule on here. We wanted this point to be coincident with this line. So as far as the program knows, this line is essentially fixed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely lock this one. This one I'm going to All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start a new line. What is it? If you guys are a fan of uh, the Flash, there's like a thing where uh, Mr. Freeze is like, you make a plan, you study the plan, you mess up the plan, you throw away the plan. That's what we're doing doing here. Um, so what we do is now that we have a reference point here, go from there to here, and voila, we finish the sketch. And then, so this is highlighted in yellow. It's, it's, all right, so now, now Fusion 360 is completely freaking out because it, uh, it, uh, it, we got rid of its reference points, right? So the old reference point used to be here, but now it's back here but it still exists. So it's like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life and like the rules, this isn't supposed to align. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna fix it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna edit the circular sketch. Oh no. All right, so now that we have the circular sketch open, we're gonna make this line coincident, this point, these two points coincident. Or it doesn't wanna move because we already gave it a reference, so we're gonna get rid of it altogether. Uh, delete. Uh, delete. All right, whatever, that doesn't matter. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna make a circle, cancel, make a circle, we're gonna start it at this point somewhere around here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna select this point and this point should match up. Let me see something here.
Okay. You know what, Leonard Snart, you have a point. We're gonna throw away the plan. I'm gonna select all the errors that it's throwing me. Just get, just get rid of them. We don't need, we don't need that negativity in our lives. It's okay. We don't need that negativity. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're starting back from the circle. So create sketch, sketch right on here. Uh, circle sketch. Then we're gonna select this point, this point, and we're gonna bring them together because that's where they belong. Hey, hey, that works. They finally, they finally came together happily, happily ever after. Uh, and then we're going to smart dimension the circle, and then we want the circle to be three, three inches in diameter. And if we did our math right, which we kind of did, did we? All right, it's a little bit off, but that's essentially what you would do. You'd figure out the, the basis from there. Um, yeah, and then now you would do the sweep, which it's still. Does that does that help, Laura, Ali, Leah, Sergio? Yeah, no, much better. Yeah, I apologize for the uh, cacophony that was that explanation. It's just you know sometimes when models don't go your way, you got to play around with it a little bit. Um, I've seen, not, I'm I've not seen an more, expert yet. What? I've seen a uh, much worse design, so it's all right. That's part of the learning process. All right, great. You see, that's the important part. We don't teach you how to 3D model. We teach you how to 3D model horribly and then fix your mistakes. Um, I think Ali's going to get me in trouble for saying, nah, Ali's cool. All right, so what we do it's is hilarious. we, <laughs> what we do is we do a sweep, profile, path, we select our path, and then this, we want it to cut. So Can he freeze or what is my internet? Yeah, so probably his, his internet uh, disconnected. So he'll be back in a minute once he reconnects. In the meantime, a review of the features we did. We did loft, which I, I wish that's new to me. We did extrude sweep. It's kind of like a extruding, but when you sweep it to a certain path. And we also attempted mirrors, which I'm surprised we couldn't mirror the, the, the spline path to the other side it probably has to do with the fact that you're trying to mirror something that's that's offset at an angle so that's one thing to consider but besides that i've seen other designs uh that do this this coin sorting function and this one's one of them other designs have a circular circular function where they put the coins through a funnel hopefully you guys see that soon and in another session. Hey, Isaac. So what, I want, hey, so what I wanted to do, so my computer started. I don't know what happened, but it just shut down. Um, but what I, uh, like, it didn't shut down. It got disconnected from a couple things. Um, but uh, do you guys have any questions about the Fusion 360 modeling? Uh, Laura, were you saying something to us or no? No. No. Oh, okay. Um, no, you're good. You're good. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope you got you guys took something away from this. Uh, the net future ones will be much smoother than than this one. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the original plan was to make a cylindrical uh, coin sorter where. Uh, you kind of just slide it in and that way it's a little bit more compact since it's like four coins instead of having one that's extended it's uh, compact to a cylinder uh, but the cylindrical functions on fusion and the cylindrical functions on solidworks are 
two different, completely different uh, functions. Um, so me personally, I'm more adept at SolidWorks. However, I do know, I, I am familiar with uh, Fusion, but not at the same level I am with SolidWorks. Originally, I thought I was gonna be able to bring over the skills, but sadly, no. Um, I guess that In concludes our classes, the... are we ever gonna use SolidWorks or we always use Fusion for ACC? So in the way it works is- uh, You use SolidWorks at the end. Uh, so, yep. Oh, Ale can take that one. No, yeah, you were on the right track. So the way it usually works, and Isaac can tell you for his own experience, because he's in senior design, he already took the senior design. I'm taking it right now. The way it works is they make you do all that stuff at the end, which is unfortunate because biomedical engineers should know just as much how to build stuff than mechanical or civils, especially when, when it comes to computer drafting. So you learn at the end, the last two semesters, and I'm doing that right now, and they're making us do weekly sessions, kind of like this one where instructor comes and they teach you how to build a certain object. Last week we did a prosthetic leg model. So it's not to scale, but it's, it's just something that looks like a, a, a hip implant that you will put for biomedical engineers. And that those are, they teach you at the same time those functions necessary to perform on SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360. The thing is that once you graduate, they don't cover that. So the that shock you have to get it on your own. And it, there's gonna be there's gonna there's gonna be some offset cost to that. But it's definitely worth it because it's a skill that you'll learn and carry in any engineering field you go. So those are my two cents. I will get started as soon as you can, not only on auto on Fusion 360, but on SOLIDWORKS. It's SOLIDWORKS free as well? Uh, it's free because you guys are FIE students. And so uh, there's at the engineering center, there's a server in which you can connect to remotely with FIU to access that. It's called Citrix. Mm. And so that's how you guys can use it as FIU students. Um, so uh, I just wanted uh, to say if you guys have any uh, like questions about uh, Fusion 360 or 3D modeling, uh, or if you guys have like, if you guys need help at all times, feel free to, at any time, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm in the group chat, so my number is in the group chat, uh, and we'll be having more of these sessions. Uh, I did want to ask you guys, um, what, what is your opinion on, on this, on the, so this one a little bumpy, once the next session, we, it's every two weeks, once every two weeks. So the next one, we're going to be making a Pokeball. Um, uh, I did want to ask you guys, is there anything you uh, disliked, especially about the workshop, anything you liked about the workshop? I want to be able to improve with these and uh, make sure it comes to like the utmost benefit of you guys. I mean, just this one, I got lost. So it's kind of, sad that I couldn't finish it. But I mean, that was me, it was not the guys. So I guess it's lower sometimes. Okay. Okay, also, slow, slow down. Yes, I think also? the menu looks different than yours. I think we talked about this last time because we have like another version. Because I have a student version. So sometimes yeah. when you're selecting something, it's not exactly where it is in mind, so it takes a little longer, so you get. Okay, okay. Um, all right, that's no problem. I'll be happy to slow it down a little bit more. Uh, just, you know, um, let, let me know. Uh, so that way I know when to like, you know, move forward. And um, so sadly, I wanna, so a bit of a heads up, my, so the Fusion 360 I have is probably gonna look even more different next time. Uh, they're limiting the free version that they have out. So come October 1st, they're going to get rid of a couple features that I have access to that you guys might still have since you guys have the student version. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll slow down and I'll try to help guide you guys as best as I can. Um. Um, I would say uh, a suggestion would be like when you're using the terminology for which um, like tools you're using, explain like what they're used for and then do it. Because sometimes you say like tools and I'm like, what's it doing? And then, yeah. Okay. All right. 
uh, was there, did I follow up on any tools that you missed out on or were there any ones uh, you're still curious about? Uh, no, no, it's all good now. <laughs> all right, awesome, thank you. Um, Mr. Lego Shark Sergio, um, any, any, any uh, suggestions, uh, comments, concerns? All good? All right, great. Uh, great to see you, by the way, bro. I think. I hope it's the same Sergio. I think it's the same Sergio. I think that's his last name. If it's not, it's the, okay, great. Awesome. It's great it's to see you, dude. It's a great review. All right. Um, all right. If you guys have, uh, all right, last question, and then I'll let you guys go back to your uh, lives. Do you guys have anything you want to see modeled in a, a future workshop? Uh, what type of Pokeball is it? Are you are you planning to make? Uh, I don't know, bro. The regular one, the red one. Okay, sounds great. I can't wait. I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan, so don't like murder me when I say the regular one, and then that's not the right name. No, it's fine. All that right. uh, that that's as perfect as it goes because I, I don't even know the difference either. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I have some friends who are just like, that's not what it's called, and then you know they just annihilate you. All right. Uh, if there are no suggestions, uh, I guess this is this is it. Thank you guys for coming. Yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, have a great night, guys. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank Stay you. safe. Okay, so we're gonna pick up where Isaac left off last session and it's, we're going to finish the box that short the coins so let's jump straight into it this is how it'll look that's how design is intended to look like and i'll show you the steps on how to cheat and how to get there so now let's go into autodesk fusion 360. Let's get started. The first thing you might want to do is check your documents, settings, views, and origin. Just to make sure, first of all, that everything is visible, you can turn things off, the origin off, and turn other elements invisible and visible by clicking these icons. But we wanted today to do an inches, so we're going to convert those metrics. Once that's done, we're going to decide on a plane to work on. So it really doesn't matter which plane you, you start with because if you have a concept in your mind and you have a plan of how you're gonna construct it, then it's gonna work out regardless of the orientation. So I'm gonna decide, start with the top. And what we're gonna create is we have this top plane. We're gonna create a sketch on it, create a sketch. So it allows us to select the top plane. I'm gonna make a sketch on it, start drawing. Let's select my plane and now it's letting me choose what I want to draw on it. I want to make a shape of this, this form. There can be some variations in your design and that's okay. Because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fit, fit it using smart dimension. Just to make sure all the sides are exactly like the dimensions I want intended to be. So there's that. What we can do here is we can probably make this steeper because we're inserting coins.
That looks good. So this is gonna be the face of one side of our ramp. What we wanna do next is we want to create the same face on the opposite side, but at an, uh, but at an elevation. So we're gonna put a slant on it. And for, in order for us to do that, we need to do something called reference geometry. So let's finish sketch. Sketch is all good. Here's our sketch. And we go to construct and we put offset plane. And what it does is just creates a reference point from our top, bottom, and side planes in order for us to sketch off those planes. So I'm gonna put offset plane and we're gonna to go to, we're gonna choose the plane in which we wanna offset it with. The top plane is in this case, and we wanna do it, let's say seven inches away from it. So if we drag and click, if we click and drag our model, right here we have our top plane on the bottom and our offset plane is seven inches away from the original plane. And this is where we're going to draw the new sketch on the second plane. Notice that when I created the plane, I have a new box for sketches and a new box for planes that I constructed. So now we're going to repeat the same process and we're going to add, we're going to select this plane and we're going to make a sketch on it. So this is our plane that's coming out from their top plane. Plane one is what it's called. And we're gonna draw a sketch on it, the same same design. We're gonna make it at an angle. They don't have to be exact, exactly the same dimensions. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create fitting with the smart dimension or sketch dimension in this case. So now all our dimensions are defined and we're gonna finish our sketch. And if you look at our model again, let's zoom out a bit. This is our top plane and this is the second plane we put on our top plane, plane number one. If we zoom out and tilt, see how it's offset. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called loft between these two planes. And loft is going to just fill in the, sh the gaps between these two shapes so we can make that angle. We select loft and we choose our planes that we want to use. We're gonna loft this one and loft that one. We look at our model again. This is what the loft does. That looks good, so we're gonna click OK. That's our model. Uh, tilt the model this way. See how it's at an angle. So now we have to worry about this gap right here. So this gap right here is where is where the coins are going to collect. But if we create but if we create a drawing to extrude from the bottom, it's gonna cut through the loft that we did. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it, instead of from this side, we wanna make it 
from this side going in. Let me show you in a minute. Also make your sketches visible and your plans visible, which I highly recommend. That way you know where your reference points are. Sketch. Let's ask you which plane again. And we want to make it on this plane. And on this plane. We're going to draw the triangle. Make sure our points, this is perpendicular, and our points here, points in it, are touching. Make sure this is coincident. Once that's good, you finish your sketch. From there, we're going to extrude it. So we choose a function, extrude. We select this sketch to extrude. If you look at the model, this is how it is. I want to extrude it, the depth of our model. You can add a negative to extrude it the opposite way. What we're looking for. So once that is done, we extruded the model and we are going to join these two parts together. That's how it's going to look like. We join the parts and when you look at our model again, it's complete. So now we're going to make the bottom part, the base of this coin collector. And it's pretty easy because it's just going to be a sketch and an extrude. So I go back for our sketch. Choose our front plane again. Or if you want, let's try something else. To exit the sketch, I press finish sketch. I go back to my previous sketch, which I have here in my history. delete this sketch and I'm stuck with this sketch. So I'm going to modify this sketch. This sketch I can actually modify, change the dimension here to make it much steeper. So I, or I can just draw a rectangle here, which will be my new base. It will be my new base for the coin collector. That's a good depth. There we go. And then we go back with our 
smart dimension or our sketch dimension. And we fit the appropriate dimensions we desire for this part. We can do the same thing again. We're going to create. So we agree with our sketch. That looks good. And then we extrude it. We look at our model. And in the direct direction, we want to extrude it. Make it negative. So it's extruding in our direction, in the direction we desire it to extrude. And this is how the piece looks so far. Let's check that one more time. So what we can do now is let's join these two pieces. That looks good. We're going to create the base for the collection for the coins to collect. So the coins are going to slide down here through the ramp and collect down into a bin below. So to do that, we're going to create a sketch. Create a sketch, and we're going to choose which plane we want to draw our sketch on. Now, all these four planes that we have here, they wouldn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct a plane offset to this plane. So we collect, so we can make the sketch down here. Let's see how long this is. Inch and seven inches. So we can cut it shorter. Five. Okay, and our new sketch plane is here, plane number two. On plane number two, on plane number two, we can now draw our new sketch. We select the plane we want to sketch on, and then we're going to make it a circle, two-point circle. And we're going to check. So we're going to make our two-point circle. Start there. And we're going to draw a line. We're going to draw a line from this point here all the way across to this point here. And what that's going to accomplish is it's going to bisect this circle that we made. Now that we bisected with, with this line, we can go to the trim and take away this path for the circle. With that done, we finish our sketch and we extrude it. So look at our model. This is how the model looks like. And for extra extrude it, Select the profile plane, which is this one, the sketch. And we want to we want to extrude it to the other side, so we're going to make it negative. Two inches. And 
that's pretty good. Make it two, make it 1.5. I'll make it two. And it's going to join to the existing parts. So draw a model. And now you see our coin collector has this round base and this ramp and this body where the parts are collected. Let's make sure all our planes and sketches are visible. I'm going to close the origin and the views and keep my sketches and constructions open so I can see and visualize my planes and sketches. Now we're going to draw on our collecting the bin. Let's go back to our sketch. So we have our semicircle here. And we're going to click offset. And we're going to select this curve to offset. And what that does is going to make the exact same curve for either within or outside the semicircle. So that way it's concentric. In this case, I want to make it that much offset, but inside of it. So I, I flip it. And I do that because I want to make this border inside. That looks good, so we leave it as it is. And now I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to draw a line on this circle. Actually, no, this is good. Finish your sketch. And now I'm going to draw a line on the circle, but with it on a separate sketch. I'm going to choose my, extru my extruded sketch as a new line, as a new surface to work on. And I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to estimate this. I'm just looking at the blocks. One. So there's, there's 14 blocks, and we want to divide into three sections, each one. So more or less, it's four blocks per each one. So we're going to put four here. We're going to put five. here well, another one here and if they're not exact don't worry because what we're going to do now is we are going to fit them. We're going to make this line perpendicular to this line. And if you can't, that's fine. What you can do instead is you can offset it. You offset it so you create a parallel line next to it. That, that much next to it. You're going to do the same thing for the other one. You offset it. And this one, we're going to flip it to the other side. So it's equal. So I have these parallel lines now. And those will be kind of our dividers between one section and the other. That was good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to accept our sketch and we're going to extrude it. In which plane? We're going to extrude this plane.
one second. Let's go back to our sketch. Let's delete this sketch. So we go here, we accept our sketch, and then we go back here and delete it. And we're gonna choose, we're gonna check on this sketch. So we're gonna actually draw lines on this sketch. So it's touching both the arc and these lines. And now we're going to offset it. I'm going to choose these lines to offset. Same procedure. Offset. And this time we do a negative. Like that. Click OK. And that separates for us the different sections because it's all in the same sketch. So when we go back to extrude it, when we choose our when we choose a plane we want to extrude, then I got it. Back here, we're going to modify our sketch again. The issue is, it's thinking that we're sketching it on this bottom plane. What we want to sketch it is on the top plane. So we're going to go to the top plane, the sketch up there. On this plane. So we want to sketch on that plane. We sketch there. That's good. Same procedure we're going to make a line that's going to bisect our semicircle. It's going to bisect our circle so we can make a semicircle by trimming this off. That's done. So now we finish our sketch. Close. We add the lines to divide it. They're going to divide a different We add our lines. And now we're going to offset them. That's complete. And what we end up with is three different sections on the top surface, not the bottom one that we're going to extrude into. Finish your sketch, and we're going to extrude it now. We selected our surfaces to extrude, and we're going to, since we're extruding it into the, the plane, we're going to make a negative. In this case, it's not bad. So it's more difficult. We're cutting into it, so that's how it looks like, but this one's missing. So we're going to go back and review that sketch. 
definitely can do that here. So we're making sure these lines are perpendicular to this line right here. So it's defined, you finish your sketch. And let's attempt this extrude one more time. Still not there. So in that case, we can do a go to our family tree and we suppress that last action. So that's how it looks like now. We got all the different dividers available. Good. Let's go back to the device. That's how it looks like right now. And what's missing is the actual feeding mechanism. We have the ramp, we have the bin, and we're actually make the holes in the slots to where the coins are gonna fall into. And to do that, we're gonna make another reference point. So notice how we have this plane here and our, and our plane down here. We're gonna make one more plane and this one's gonna be at an angle. So at an angle to what, you might ask. So we're gonna make it at an angle to this plane. It's gonna ask us to make a line. We wanna make it at a slant to this starting line where our ramp is. And we're gonna play around with the numbers. We're gonna play around with the numbers so we can get the right angle. And to do that, let me zoom in. So we notice our plane is this one, this orange one, and our line, our plane we made with our ramp is this one. So I just want to check if the plane we're making is flat along or parallel to this, this ramp plane. If you do that, we're just going to play around with those numbers. We're going to go back here, and it did not work out. Okay, so I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, the line does not work out. But you continue trying. Since I negative five worked out, 
great. So I click okay. So now I have a plane at a negative five degree angle. That's going to slide these coins in. And we're going to just construct our circles, those slots, on this plane. So we go back. So this is for which plane? Orange plane, the one we just made. I'm going to create a circle and lines. First, I want to make a reference line starting from here all the way over over here at the very end. And then I want to make two more reference lines here. And escape. And one more reference line here. Great. Once that's done, I'll be able to reference that point easily with the circles I'm going to draw. Now I create my circle, center down their circle. And since we want to use real examples of coins, we're going to use uh, dimensions for penny, the nickel, and the quarter. So if you think about it, the ones that should fall first are should be should be the ones in smallest diameter or smaller radius. So the penny should be the one falling here, then the nickels and the quarters. Draw a circle. Doesn't matter the dimension we try right now. Because what we're going to do is we're going to fit these circles along this line. First, we're going to define the dimensions of the circle. Pennies are approximately that big. Nickels are approximately this big. Quarters are approximately that big. And now we're going to make these circles tangent to the original, to this line. So we click here, and it's going to connect to it. And we're going to click here, tangent. And same here. So if we look at it again, all the circles are tangent to this line, even though they're not centered, but that's okay, because now we're going to center it. The lines we drew over here are going to allow us to center this circle. So this whole thing is seven inches from here to here. Seven divided by three. Two point three. So we're going to go ahead and say, from here to this midpoint, it's got to be half of that. One point six. So let's go back and make smart dimension. From this point to that point. So there you go. That's for the first one. I'm going to repeat this for the other one. The reference point here to the midpoint here.
try this again. So we go back to our plane. Select it. And sketch on it. At this point, we make these perpendicular to each other. And make these perpendicular to each other as well.
So that's what it looks like once you center the circles onto the ramp. What we're going to focus on now is on cutting it. Before, in order for us to cut it, we need to actually include a plane and a sketch for us to cut through. So the first step is accept the sketch. And that looks nice. We're going to make three different planes. One on this axis here, one on this axis, and one on this axis pointing straight down. So correct. Offset plane. And we're going to offset plane to this angle. At what distance? At uh, two objects. We don't have to worry about distances. We're going to make it touch exactly that point there. And that's great. 1.66. We're okay with that. And we repeat it. Construct, offset plane. That's our plane we're going to offset it from. And we want to offset it to the object. Great. And numeral trace object on this plane. That object. Perfect. Let's go ahead and make all our plane visible. This is how our planes look like. And we're now sketch on each plane. So now we go to our this plane. And we're gonna sketch. Sketch plane number four. And we're gonna sketch a line going straight down and out, down and out. So we look at our circles and we try to estimate as close as possible for sentiments. So let's, uh, let's stop there and then we're going to make it down and out. So let's make it touch. Escape. And finish a sketch. And go back outside. Go back. Now the model starts to look more like a tunnel. That's where the planes are going to fall in and out. So we repeat this for the other planes. Let's make that plane visible again. Let's choose our plane number five and we sketch on it. This time we're working with this circle right there. So, draw a line there as close as we can. Estimate it to that distance. And we're making it down and out. Same thing with the other one. And escape. Here, sketch. the same for the last plane and number six. So like that plane and we sketch on it. That's the last plane to sketch on so it's the last circle. We click a line down and out. Perfect. Escape. No sketch. And this is when we all put it together Put it all together, it looks like this. Our coins are going to roll down here and slide off through there. But we actually need to make the tunnel. To do that, we're going to call a function called sweep. We're going to use sweep and we're going to select the profiles we want to sweep. Now we're going to select our path. We want to select that path. And you can see it's cutting straight through the path we made for each one. That's great because it means all the coins are going to deposit where you want them to. Let's go ahead and click OK. And 
once that's done, you can see our tunnel was made, and the coins are going to slide off into the perspective chamber. Kind of ellipsoid, but it also has to do with the angle at which the sweep was made, which is fine. Let's make this pretty and perform a a chamfer or a pivot just to make these edges look nice. How's that? And one more time, for good measure. Let's check all our sketches. Sketch one. At least I'd like to do from the beginning so I can know the progression of the model. Sketch two, and sketch three, great. Sketch four was that. Let's check this sketch. And let's check the extrude we did on this. Yeah, so we want to join it. That was it. We want to join this, and it's going to fuse these all these parts together, so that when we look inside here, it's actually fused. There's no gap. It's great. It's good to use this family tree at the bottom, so I can see my progression as well. So I'd like to keep all my sketches visible, all my planes visible, and use this family tree at the bottom. So there you have it. Now you can 3D print this and insert your coin slots down this ramp. Hope you had fun, hope you learned something from it, and I'll see you in the next session.